Hi, welcome to High Road. My name's Andrew, and in today's episode, I'm going to start working on the fingerboard for my guitar neck. Well, this is the neck so far. This is a piece of practice timber that I'm going to use to sort of get the hang of this before I start chopping up my real fretboard timber. And this is the Stumac fret slotting miter box. So this is used to actually guide the saw so that you can cut perfectly straight, perfectly to the right depth fret slots. And you use this thing here, which is a fret slot template. And so you secure the fretboard wood to the template. And then on the inside of the miter box, see that little locating pin? So that locating pin indexes with each of these slots along the template and it allows this to kind of click into place and then you use the fret saw to actually cut the frets. Okay, there we go. I'm pretty pleased with that. Next thing is to do the same work to this piece of wood, which is going to be my um, my real fretboard. I need to trim one side of it so that it actually it's too wide to fit inside the slotting jig at the moment. So I have to cut one side down and maybe do some thicknessing. I'm not sure. The place that I bought these wood samples from has already planed them and got them pretty square. So one side there is properly square and the other side is quite jagged so I'm just going to trim the jagged side given that my fretboard piece is about 11 mils to begin with there's a lot of material going to be removed from this and I'm starting out here with a fairly aggressive 60 grit sandpaper I've been at this for about an hour now. Despite the fact that this surface here is pretty level, it seems that as I've been sanding, a slight bow has occurred in the wood, so it's a bit thicker in the middle and a bit thinner on the outside. So I've been using my sanding beam like that to try and correct it, and it's slowly coming back to flat again. Well, the sanding beam method is working at the moment, but it's very slow. So I want to see if there's a way I can improve this method. I've got a whole bunch of aluminium extrusions that I use when I make road cases and I'm going to use these as I guess temporary straight edges which I can lay underneath my sanding board because all of those are so straight that should hopefully keep this straight as well okay I'm getting pretty tired of sanding at this point and <laughs> I'm considering another option. So I'm thinking about using my bobbin sander as a way to hog off more material from this fretboard. This is not precise work, this is just hogging off two to three millimeters of the surface which could take me half a day with hand sanding. So if I use my um, radius sanding beam as a bit of a backing board, I can um, if I draw a line down the side, of like a guideline, this is a perfectly flat machined surface, so I can actually use this as a way to guide my fretboard and hog off some material. Set my calipers to about 7.5mm, and, and I'm just going to use the, the pointy end of the caliper here to scribe a little line to the edge of the wood. Okay, well that's done a great job of hogging off several millimetres, maybe two or three millimetres of material. It's, it's very uneven, 
the, the side that I, I did this morning is nice and smooth still, but this side that I just sanded is quite uneven, so that'll need smoothing out by hand now. So what you see here, these are high spots, these shiny ones are low spots that was created with the spindle sander. So I've got to remove this material here to get it down to that level, which is about 0.2 of a millimetre difference. So not too much left to go. Here's something else I'm finding surprisingly effective. The spindle sander that I've got the top surface of this is, is machined completely flat, so by putting a piece of sandpaper on here, you can be assured that you're going to get an absolutely flat sanding surface. And I'm, I'm using this just to massage the last sort of bits of the wood, just to get it absolutely precise. Okay, I've done some measurements and it's getting pretty flat on the bottom now, but it is slightly thinner up in this corner and slightly thicker up in this corner. So it's flat, but the thickness is not necessarily consistent the whole way along. And I'm only talking by about 0.3 of a millimeter. It's not something that has to be addressed now. I can address it later when I'm sanding the radius into the fretboard, but I'd like to do some now if I can. So what I'm doing is, as this is the thin corner and that's the thick corner, as I'm sanding, I'm sort of starting very light and as I get to this corner here, I'm leaning a little bit over to the right and putting in more pressure. So this bit's getting a heavier sanding pressure than, than the front. So you probably can't see that, but I'm applying a little bit more pressure and rolling to the right. Okay, this is basically flat now, apart from this little low spot there. All the spindle sander marks are gone from this now. It's um, reasonably flat, but it seems that when I use this sanding surface, I get a bulge in the middle. And it seems that when I use that other method I showed you with the spindle sander, I get a bit of a, a dip in the middle. So at the moment, there's a, a very slight dip in the middle, so I'm going to switch back to this one and try and correct it. So, um, at some point sanding on this, it'll just go back to flat, and that's when I need to stop. Okay. So having checked that with calipers, this is basically um, a consistent thickness, flat on both sides, to within about 0.1 of a millimetre all the way around. So without using a thicknessing machine, doing that all by hand using sandpaper and pretty DIY methods, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with that. So that's probably ready to be slotted and then glued to the fingerboard now. And then there'll be further sanding with the, uh, the radius beam. Okay, back to paper and pen. So this rectangle represents a cross section of the fretboard. That bit there. It's basically 6.8 mil tall and about 73 mil wide. The widest point that I'm going to end up with on the fretboard is going to be about 60 millimeters. So that's at the heel. So let me just kind of mark that in. This is just to give me an idea. So roughly about there. And at the nut, it's going to be about 44.1. So I'll Okay, so the inner rectangle represents the amount of material I'll have at the nut. This represents what it'll be at the heel, and this will be material that's just going to end up being removed. Now in order to match my acoustic guitar, I want to have about 5 millimeters of the edge of the fretboard showing on the side, so that when I look down I see basically it looks almost the same as my acoustic guitar. So that's at the nut, I want to have about 5 millimeters at the nut. So then if I bring my radius block down, so as you can see at the nut end of the fingerboard I'm going to have about five millimeters on the edge. So I'll be looking down on a five millimeter border on the edge of the fingerboard. At the heel end it's going to be a little narrower. It's going to be about four millimeters or so. 
So I probably need to cut my fret slots about half a millimetre below this line. So if I cut my fret slots down to that depth, then what it means is that once I've removed all this material with my radius sanding beam, I'll still be able to see a nice clear line where the fret slot was cut all the way down to the fret slots at the heel. So I'm going to cut my fret slots first, then radius my fingerboard, then I'm going to recut the slots again with my saw and depth guide, and that will give me my final slot. So with all this in mind, I think I need to cut my initial fret slots down to a depth of three and a half millimeters from the bottom of the fretboard to the bottom of the slot. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to put the fret slot template into the jig with two layers of tape on the back. And that's to compensate for the layers of tape that are gonna be between the fretboard wood and the template when it's actually sitting in there for real. So that gives me an accurate surface to measure from. So now I'm going to readjust all of these rollers. Okay, so I've wound the guide rollers down right to the point where the teeth are just kissing the metal. So that means at the moment if I was to cut a fret slot at this depth, it would cut right through the fretboard, right to the bottom. So now I'm going to use this 3.5mm drill bit as a spacer to help me get these rollers to the height I want. Okay, looking straight down into the miter box here. So here's the saw moving back and forth with the rollers adjusted perfectly. Here is my 3.5mm drill bit and as you can see it's adjusted so that it, it just scoots in underneath the blade without touching it. So this should give me a perfect cut. Along the side here I've got index markers which show where the nut, first fret, second fret, third fret would be. But you can't just lay the piece of wood down and expect that's where the cut's going to happen because the indexing pin point is not the place where the cut happens. So if you look inside here, you can see that's the indexing pin, but that's where the cut actually happens in the middle of that gap. So if I want the nut cut in a certain spot, I have to allow an offset for where that pin's going to be. So what this means is that when the locating pin is located in this slot, the saw is going to cut there. Now I'm a little bit nervous about something here which is that there's a bit of play there. So that's potentially some wiggle room for this to go very wrong. So I'm going to really be relying on these tensioners to keep the wood still. I'm just going to push the template and the wood right back into the, um, the rear wall and use that as my straight edge for everything. I almost can't bring myself to do it. No, come on. Let's get it over with. Okay. I'm there. There it is, the first slot quite deep but that's okay that's that's what I wanted and I'll just measure it and make sure that it is the right depth yeah it's about 3.6 mil pretty close I'm just taking a closer look at this first slot that I've cut and I have a sneaking suspicion it's not totally square I don't know how this could happen because the miter box is supposed to take care of that stuff but it's cut now and I can't do anything about it so all I can really do now is continue to cut the rest of the slots and I've used every different kind of angling device I can. I've got an analog one, a digital one and I've got a set square and all of them are sort of telling me that this might be a little bit off but it's really hard to know because I'm doing it purely visually. 
if it turns out that these slots are not cut perfectly square then instead of putting my template on here square I can simply twist it to the angle that the frets are lined up to as long as they're all they should all be parallel um, but I I'm gonna cross that bridge when I come to it for now I'm kind of stuck with the angle that I've started with Right, the fret slots are cut and they're looking pretty consistent. Up here though I need to cut the nut slots, so I'm going to have to take this piece of wood off, reposition it and cut those using those two pin markers there. Okay, I've made those cuts now as well. So these two double lines represent the the nut. So that'll be filed out between those two lines. Um, this line is the end of the fingerboard. So this end, this section on the end will just simply be removed. But I need to determine: Are these frets square? I really don't think they are. Something about just looking at them, they seem like half a degree off or something. They all seem like they're leaning this way. So I'm gonna use the markings that I made on my template and line them up and see what I get. Yeah, something's definitely off. So when I line up my my nut and 14th fret lines with the fretboard I've cut, it lines up the way I've shown you here. So it's it's definitely askew, but that's okay. It just means I need to make sure I glue the fretboard on askew, just like this. I will double check this a few other ways though. So I've used a few different methods so far and all of them have come up with the same result. The center line is slightly crooked in that direction. There it is.